What's better than a group of handsome men from the Shinsengumi? A group of handsome samurai vampires from the Shinsengumi. Up until now, I actually haven't talked about any Otome games, even though I've played a few of them. So I figured if I was going to talk about any, let's start with one of the most well-known ones out there, Hakuoki. At this point in time, far beyond its initial release way back in 2008 on the PS2, Hakuoki has basically evolved into its own multimedia franchise with a butt-ton of spin-offs, fan discs, anime adaptations, manga adaptations, and so much more. Hakuoki, summed up in a sentence, is a visual novel about the Shinsengumi, a group of hard-headed samurai who followed a code of honor in a dying age, the trials and tribulations they face, and vampire demons because I guess this was 2008 and dang were vampires hot. Before I start going in on Hakuoki, let me lay down my basic thoughts about the overall story, both Kyoto Winds and Ido Blossoms included. I think Hakuoki is fine. It's pretty much what you expect when someone talks about an Otome game. I'm sure it ain't the pinnacle of Otome games or whatnot, but if you came looking for some action, some samurai history, and some Hawkeyes covered in blood, you'll get all three of those. There are like 12 different love interests, so chances are you'll probably at least find one of them interesting. There's a lot of problems which I'll be getting into, such as pacing issues, which I think is the first and foremost issue, an exceedingly questionable port and localization that I wasn't the biggest fan of. Still, I think the voice actors did a good job. Music's alright, nothing too groundbreaking, but gets the job done. The CG art is nice to look at as well, in that ho shoujo style that we all used to from Otome games, specifically Otome. If Hot Bishonen Vampires is enough of a draw to get you to want to play this game, then you'll probably like Hakuoki. Now the reason I'm saying all of this up front is because I'm going to focus more on the things that I thought brought down the overall experience, so, I'm trying to give what I think before it at. Hakuoki is one of the more popular products from the Otome brand, an Otome game-focused branch of Idea Factory. My problem with Idea Factory is that they take the shotgun approach to making both visual novels and JRPGs. What I mean by that is that they release a ton of products with all very similar UIs and engines per gear. Games can range from stunningly mediocre that all feel incredibly samey, to fairly decent at times. Hakuoki is one of their most popular franchises, something which they clearly recognize, as indicated by how hard they milked the franchise. Hakuoki initially came out in 2008 on the PS2, and ported to the PSP in 2009, DS and PS3 in 2010, 3DS in 2011, PS Vita in 2013, a mobile port in 2014, until finally in 2015, they were like, screw it, let's just remake Hakuoki, split the visual novel into two parts, and then release them one at a time for, I don't know, profit? They then ported that remake to Steam during 2017 and 2018, which brings us to today with Hakuoki Kyoto Winds and Hakuoki Edo Blossoms. This remake essentially tries to cram in stuff from the fan disc as well as add in six more guys for you to fall in love with. Aside from all that, the CG pretty much remains the same but upgraded for a widescreen format. Over the many years, Otome has released a plenty of spin-offs like a school life version, two that involve two entirely different protagonists, many many fan discs, a prequel to Hakuoki which is completely skippable, and even a sequel with after stories that only came out on the Switch in Japan. It's a franchise at this point, but I'm not going to cover any of that because well that's a lot. Instead we're just here to talk about the one that started it all, Hakuoki. I kind of glanced over this earlier, but let me reiterate that the Hakuoki remaster Kyoto Winds and Edo Blossoms is one visual novel split into two parts. Kyoto Wind contains all of the common route and ends right after the main character finally enters the desired hero's route, while Edo Blossom contains the actual conclusion to the story. Why they did this is beyond me, since all the routes in Kyoto Winds ends right after when something starts happening, and Edo Blossoms doesn't make much sense if you haven't played Kyoto Winds already. Edo Blossoms is also painfully short, clocking in at about one hour per route. Long story short, treat the two different games as if they were a single one, because that's how it was originally intended. No idea why they bought a split into two parts in the first place, maybe it was a space thing, or maybe it was a money thing. So setting aside the franchise, what's the story of Hakuoki? Well, it takes place during the Bakufu period, a very famous, interesting, and turbulent time period where Japan gets massively upheaved by foreign powers. You play as Shizuru Yukimura, the daughter of a pharmacist who has suddenly gone missing. In order to find her father, she travels all the way to the far-off mythical land of, well, Kyoto. Upon being rescued from a trio of white demonic ronin, you run into the outrageously good-looking men of the Shinsengumi, who take you in while they help you search for your father. Still, 
what is with the white demonic ronin that the Shinsengumi have labeled the Rasetsu, or since we're playing the English version, Furies. Another big part of the story is that since the Shinsengumi allows no females, you have to cross-dress the entire game while hiding out in the Shinsengumi. You learn more about what your father was involved in and more importantly, about all the passionate men of the Shinsengumi. We've got 12 guys, so let's just jump straight into going over the boys because holy is there way too many of them. First off, we have the Shinsengumi captain, starting with the one who was on the box art, and everyone's usual favorite of the Shinsengumi, the Mayo Addict Toshizo Hichikata- uh, Wrong Hichikata, I mean, the demonic vice commander, Hichikata Toshizo. He's the strict one that will do anything to defend the Shinsengumi, and acts as a foil to Commander Kondo's more lighthearted approach. Up next is the other one most likely to be adapted when talking about the Shinsengumi, first captain, Okida Soji, a sword genius. He's the jokey type whose jokes unfortunately only seems to involve murdering you in cold blood due to his obsessive love towards Kondo Isao. Saito Hajime, the third captain of Shinsengumi, who is a master of the eye or quick draw style. The lone wolf no nonsense type who will accomplish any objective given to him. Heisuke Toto, the mood maker of the group who is both the youngest member of the Shinsengumi and captain of the 8th division. Sanosuke Harada, the 10th division captain. He uses a spear. And he's pretty much the suave womanizer, you know, easygoing, that kind of person in the group. Next up is Shinpachi Nagakura, the captain of the second division. He's the big dumb one, passionate about swordsmanship, alcohol, woman, a straightforward guy. What he lacks in brain, he makes up for in sheer muscles. Last of the Shinsengumi captains is Sanon Keisuke. The fastest way to describe him is the pragmatic glasses guy. Moving on from the captains, we have Susumu Yamazaki, the intelligence officer and shinobi for the Shinsengumi, Hachiro Iba, member of the Shogun Guard, friend of the Shinsengumi, and childhood friend of Yukimura. Soma Kazue, a newcomer to the Shinsengumi who comes in partway through the story, idealistic and loyal to a fault, Ryoma Sakamoto, the legendary revolutionary who opposes the Bakfu, and is a pragmatic realist who is really the actual womanizer of the story. And finally, Chikage Kazuma, an arrogant blonde man who has the same voice actor as Kaiba, which already puts him head above the others. Before we get into the story bits, let's talk about the gameplay, as much as there is one considering it's a visual novel. Hakuoki rose with the classic affection meter system, where every decision you make raises a certain character's affection meter and all the highest is the route you end up on for the most part, alongside extra scenes throughout the game. It's incredibly straightforward, especially considering the fact that Hakuoki does the miraculously brain dead thing of whenever you make a choice, the game plays a little music jig to tell you, wow, that was a great choice you made. Getting with and into any of the Shinsengumi captains is pretty much no problem since you interact with them throughout the entire game no matter what. However, trying to access anyone outside of the captains is a little annoying as on a normal playthrough, you'll most likely never see them. Basically, you have to intentionally pick the bad options for the Shinsengumi captains, and only by avoiding all the Shinsengumi scenes do you get the chance to interact with any of the love interests outside of the group, allowing you to raise their affection meter, or honestly, you don't mess with any of this as this remaster has added the record of service function which allows you to skip to any part of the game you've seen and set any character's affection meter to whatever you want after you've beaten the game once, which is convenient. When you start Edo Blossom, you can instantly select any character you want and continue the story as if you finished the route in Kyoto Wind, which considering that Kyoto Wind has only one short chapter dedicated to each character, is an absolute godsend. Feel free to skip to Edo Blossom after having finished the game once if you are lazy, or abuse the record of service function to see the final chapters for every character. Edo Blossom introduces a corruption mechanic, which entirely boils down to whenever they give you the choice between giving the love interest blood, medicine, or nothing, you pick blood because otherwise you get a bad ending. Wow, what a choice. The second thing I want to mention is that, wow is this a pretty awful PC port of the game. Which hey, surprise, PC ports are bad, right? But it's worse than you imagine. The default button layout is highly questionable at best, as in it doesn't make any sense from any perspective. Why on earth is history W, confirm K, skip O, auto button B, menu I, like what, inventory? I'm shocked I'm saying this, but this visual novel controls better with a controller than a mouse and keyboard. You can change some buttons, but for whatever reason, some you can't. Options are bare bones, stuff like the game halts when it's not centered on the screen. All button layouts on screen assume you are using an Xbox controller and display face buttons. 
Record of Service doesn't work correctly since clicking confirms the next option even though in gallery mode it works completely fine. There is a glossary of terms function for the game where a word will be highlighted in purple to indicate they have a definition, except sometimes it's not there because they forgot to program it. It's quite awful, maybe one of the worst ports I've seen. With all that out of the way, we can finally get to talking about the main part of any visual novel, disregarding stuff like ease of use because yes, while it is important, at the end of the day, the main point to any visual novel is how much fun the characters are and is it a fantastic story that sticks in your mind once it's all over. And in that respect, Hakoki is... well, um, we'll get to that. If there's one thing Hakoki does well, it's that you really feel the fact that these guys really care about the main character, Chizuru Yukimura. There's a solid amount of CG and scenes with every character, although some characters certainly have way more than others, like Hijikata. There are also quite a bit of action sequences, especially in Edo Blossoms, which makes sense as it's pretty much the finale half of the story. Music is serviceable, not bad, but nothing I'll be listening to after the game is over. The localization for the Hakuoki is a little... Eh, there's nothing so incredibly jarring that I think they literally just took Google Translate and used it as their translator. But just some choices that I wasn't the biggest fan of. For instance, the decision to translate Hichikata and Kazuma's rougher style of talking into swearing a lot. I understand why they did it. In Japanese, the tone of voice, accent, and even what words you choose to use can convey a rougher style of talking versus a more polite way of talking. And it was pretty common in the past to equate rough as swears a lot. If you want to laugh, listen to the Yakuza 1 English dub because that's pretty much the epitome of what I'm talking about here. It certainly gets the point across, but there are smarter ways to convey an incredibly rough tone than just swearing like a sailor. It reminds me of when you run into very unpolished fan subs or fan translations. In another example, they also tend to ignore the nuance of how everyone has different accents, such as Sakamoto Ryoma speaking in Kansai Ben, potentially Kyoto Ben to be more specific if I had to guess, which has a much different cadence. <laughs> But the translation doesn't really reflect that in any real way, and the text feels the same way as if anyone else was talking. Not saying it would have been an easy job to reflect that change in dialect for the English text, but it's something I would have liked to have seen in some capacity. It gives a lot of the character's dialogue a lot more flavor when you include it in there. Another odd choice of translation is some of the Japanese words. Probably the most prominent one is the translation of Rakshasa into Furies. Those with a keen ear who've played the game will notice that they are saying Rasetsu, but that's a Japanese way of saying Rakshasa. Considering the fact that they have this whole glossary definition that a lot of visual novels have, I don't see why they didn't just leave the name Rakshasa. Even if you don't know what it is because say you didn't play Persona or some other games that have Rakshasas in them, just have the definition of the glossary that is present like many of the other terms that are in the game. Furies is also a pretty terrible translation. Yes, Lakshasas are essentially big angry deities, so they are furious, therefore it's Furies. Unfortunately, Furies is another term for a competing different chthonic deity called Edinias, which are all female, which makes it really odd considering that the Rakshasa in this game are all men. It doesn't help that Furies have already been popularized in many different forms of media such as Hades. Many of the other examples are like that, where I can see why they chose the translation they did, but I think it's an awkward choice for one reason or another. Then there's just straight up bad translation, period. I have several examples of this, uh, one right here for instance. The original sentence is, Sona koshi nukeru renju wa mizashiteru sumori wa nenda. Roughly translated to English would be, we ain't aiming to be a bunch of cowards like that. How they translate it is, we're not bitches. Yes, it's technically the same idea, but I also think it's a lot lazier and resorts to swearing when it doesn't need to. There are other examples like this where it's just, how much stick, what? After listening to the Japanese, I understand what he's trying to say is, how much crap he gave you out there. Why they didn't just use that, considering their propensity for resorting to swear words is beyond me. It's not a terrible translation. The examples I'm showing here are just a couple cherry-picked from a visual novel that has a pretty big script, but it does kind of add to the whole rough factor of it, just like all of the other mechanical errors I spoke about earlier. Now let's get into the main and final issue I have with Hakuoki, which is the pacing problem. While I can sum up this issue in two words, explaining it will certainly take a lot more. Hakuoki, Kyoto Winds, and Edo Blossoms has pacing issues for a ton of reasons. For one, the fact I'm even calling it Kyoto Winds and Edo Blossoms in the first place. 
Splitting Hakuoki into two parts doesn't really make any sense, as it just ends up with Kyoto Win having 90% common route, feeling incredibly confused, in trying to somehow shove 12 different guys into the span of one common route, and Edo Blossoms being a very short finale, as in each route can be completed in under one hour of reading. But let's set aside this issue by assuming that Hakuoki isn't a game split into two parts, but rather it's just a single game that I decided to sell separately for whatever reason. What we can't set aside, however, is just how messy of a common route Hakuoki truly is. And our main reason for that is simply that Hakuoki has way too many love interests. I imagine the original was probably way tighter, considering it only had 6 love interests and was also a single game, but with this 2015 version of the game, we have somehow gone from 6 to 12, and the game really struggles to somehow fit not just scenes for all the characters present, but even some of the extra scenes from the fan disc. With this many characters, it's no wonder there's a ton of overlap between each one, and it's no wonder that the game has a hard time trying to give the spotlight to any of them. Combine this with the fact that you only have roughly 28 choices in the entirety of Kyoto Winds, which leads to the problem that there just aren't enough choices or screen time for all of these heroes. Many characters just vanish for way too long throughout the story to be relevant in most routes. Certain characters like Sakamoto Ryoma and Hachiro Iba, when you don't enter the route, you just won't see them, period, which probably comes from the fact that they were added for this remake. But even with the characters that were present in the original, they still feel like they're fighting for the limited screen time that exists throughout the common route. This might not have been a problem for the original, but unfortunately we're talking about the remake, so therefore these problems are present. Does that mean I think the remake is worse than the original? No idea, I never played the original, so I can't really compare it. With that said, even if Kyoto Win is much more of a jumbled mess in this game, it does have more characters, so it's probably still the version to play. Another part of the game that messes up the pacing big time is the fact that some of the character scenes in Hakuoki aren't tied to relationship meters, but rather to specific choices at the time. This leads to the exceedingly weird disconnect where you can make a choice with a male love interest late in the game, and the visual novel acts like he is head over heels with you, even though you barely interacted with him throughout the entirety of it. My favorite example during my very first playthrough happened during Chapter 4, when the main character Chizuru goes to convince Heisuke to go back to the Shinsengumi. Keep in mind that I've never made a choice that involved him, so I've only seen him like two times so far in the entire common route. Apparently, even though Chizuru barely knows him, Heisuke suddenly comes to the realization that it doesn't matter whose side he's on, as long as he's able to protect her, to the point that he's willing to die for Chizuru by throwing his weapons away to save her. I had a great laugh by this point, but that certainly doesn't make it any less jarring. It makes the choices feel very artificial, when everyone just hacks head over heels for the main character because you made one choice randomly. Just make it so I can't see this kind of thing unless I meet certain relationship requirements. In fact, why can't I just jump into someone else's route with a single choice? That's pretty dumb. Finally, the last pacing problem I'm gonna mention is Hakuoki's love for time skips. Hakuoki is an epic of a story that takes place over 5 years regardless of whichever route you choose. The reason for this is because Hakuoki attempts to retell the history of the Shinsengumi with some creative liberties with the more fantastical elements like demons and such. While that does sound cool at first glance, it really ends up with the reader feeling pretty lost as to what's going on at any given moment. Pretty much every 20 minutes, you get a quick recap of, wow, a bunch of stuff happened over the past month or even year. Even though they say a ton of time passes between each chapter, and that Chizuru and the rest of the Shinsengumi members have gotten close enough that they're willing to risk life and limb for her, as a player, I don't really feel it. Months pass in the blink of an eye, and I'm just kind of sitting there going, huh? What? Oh, the Shinsengumi left Nishi Hwangji Temple and moved to Fudoro Village? Where are these places really? In fact, what's the difference? W what's the difference from A to B? There isn't enough background CG, nor does enough things happen in any of the locations to really attach the player to them. The Shinsengumi moving to a completely new base should be a major occasion, except for the fact that this is already their third base and I barely have any memories associated with the previous locations anyways. The Shinsengumi is an exceedingly famous special police force that Japan really likes to bring up time and time again in pop culture. Their history is one that has been retold through countless different mediums, and the members of the group have been characterized, gender bent, and even isekai'd countless times. Hakuoki feels like they took one look at the Wikipedia article and tried their dangest to make sure they covered every single key event. 
Unfortunately, they forgot to connect these events with each other in a way that feels organic for the player. It feels like we're just hopping from one major Shinsengumi event to the next with little to no explanation. Sure, I understand the basics of the Shinsengumi history through other games and media I've seen, but I barely care nor can be bothered by all the groups they're talking about, which this game tries to go into. Constantly throughout both games, I barely even understood where exactly did everyone to Shinsengumi go because characters drop in and out. Oh, someone important got assassinated? Well, he never even appeared as a character, so I have no idea who that person really is. Psycho got sent to protect the Kishu Domain. Where is the Kishu Domain? It's just not explained very well. Even if the Shinsengumi is a staple of Japanese pop culture, you still gotta explain what the heck is going on in a way that is interesting for the readers. Even though the game takes place over a grand total of 5 years, it somehow is too short to properly give context to the players about what exactly is going on and why they should care about it. Since I just spent the last several minutes crapping on Hakuoki, let's instead switch gears and talk about the actual routes themselves. I plan on doing a spoiler filled rating of all 12 routes in a future video that should come out pretty soon, and when it does, there will be a link in the top right corner right about now. For now though, I'll give a quick spoiler free opinion right here on a few routes I recommend playing if you only end up playing the game once. With that said, chances are the route you're gonna like in this game is heavily based on whichever guy you like the most. In visual novels, especially Gaogeis and Otomes, most of the routes are usually given a main love interest. What makes them interesting to read, however, is how each route tackles the different themes of the game and how the different circumstances change how the story goes. How do characters react to one another now that their relationship has changed? These are the kind of things that drive most people to play every individual route in a visual novel. Hakuoki tries to follow in the same footsteps, but I feel like thanks to how short Edo Blossoms is, there doesn't really feel like there's enough time to differentiate the routes from each other. Still, some are a bit more unique than others, and some I think best represent Hakuoki as a visual novel, and some are just straight terrible, which I'll talk about in the Hakuoki route rating spoiler video. If you were only planning on playing Hakuoki a single time, my recommendation would easily go to the man of the hour, Hichikata Toshizo. Taking aside the fact that he's voiced by Miki Shinichiro, who also voiced my boy Lock on Stratus from Gundam 00 and Roy Mustang from FMA, it's clear that as headliner for the game, he's shown some extreme favoritism from every angle. He has the most CGs out of every member of the cast, made of choices you make throughout Kyoto Wind, somehow end up coming back to him, and he even has one more chapter than every other character. If there was any route that best represented Hakuoki as a visual novel, it's Hijikata's hands down, it's not even really a competition. You get to see the Shinsengumi from beginning to end and run through all the major events. Hijikata is also pretty much the amalgamation of all the best parts of every route tossed into one. If every route goes on a slight tangent on each of the numerous parts that make up Hakuoki, Hijikata's is the one they're taking from. It's also the only route where you find out why the game is called Hakuoki in the first place. The internal turmoil and conflict that Hijikata faces is better done than in most of the other routes, and for the most part, it doesn't feel like characters are randomly dropped from the plot as opposed to every other route. Antagonists that were set up in the beginning actually come to a decently satisfying conclusion by the end. Try not to go into spoilers here, so that's all I'm gonna say about Hichikata at this point. Although, feel free to check out the route rating video when it comes out to hear all my thoughts about every single one of those routes. Finally, if you had to choose a second route after beating Hichikata's, I would pick Kage Kazuma's. If Hichikata's route best showed the Shinsengumi in a nutshell, Kazuma's route best shows the what if scenario, as in what if Chizuru didn't hang out with the Shinsengumi the entire time, and instead played third party to their journey. Other routes only dabble in this idea, but only Kazuma's goes full on into it. It also explores the whole demon side of Hakuoki, which is left painfully sparse in every other route. Which, considering they are such a major part of the game, it's a welcome surprise to learn really anything about them as opposed to the Lakshasas, which is the focal point for nearly every other route. If Hijikata was the best representation of Hakuoki in terms of the Shinsengumi members, then Kazuma acts as the foil to that route, exploring the other side of Hakuoki that isn't really told much elsewhere. Also, Kaoru is in that route and handled a bit more tastefully than in other ones, even if he's still kinda whatever. If you just picture in your mind that you're hitting on Kaiba, the route becomes much more hilarious or even enticing if that's what you're into. At least it did for me anyways. Suda Kenjiro's voice is so layered and deep and god dang, 
makes Kazuma way better than he has any right to be. So yeah, that's Hakuoki. I know I spent a hot minute just laying into it, but that's just because I think Hakuoki's flaws brings down what is otherwise a decent experience. There's just a lack of polish overall, and most importantly, a lack of time to adequately separate each of the routes from each other. For such a popular visual novel that spans so many fan discs and sequels, I kind of expected it to not be so rough, especially considering this is a remake. All I can really say about it is that it's fine. It's everything you imagine it's going to be, nothing more and nothing less. It knows its target audience and really goes for it. If you have any suggestions on other Otoma games for me to check out, feel free to tell me in the comments section below. I know there are some pretty highly rated ones out there, but so is Hakuoki and I thought it could have been better. I would like to play one that really impresses me though, and if I enjoyed it enough, I'll do a video on that one too. Or if you want to talk about how hot Hijikata is in the comment section, feel free, I won't stop you. As always, all the supportive stuff is in the same place as always, like, subscribe, notifications. And with that, I'll see you later. Till next time.